Hey guys, this video is going to be a step-by-step -step guide on how to invest in the stock market. If you follow this video to the end, you'll leave with a very good and solid understanding of everything you need to do to start investing in stocks and earn money in the stock market. This video took me a long time to plan out, so I hope you guys get a lot out of it, and I hope you come out with a strong foundation in stock investing. So first up on the agenda is what are stocks? So this is how I like to think about it. When you're investing in a stock, you're pretty much buying ownership in a company. When you buy one share of a company, it's like getting a very, very small piece of that company. People buy stocks as an investment. And for most people, they buy stocks in a company that they believe in. They believe that this company is going to do well in the future. And as a result, the share price is going to go up and they will make money by holding that stock. Now, the reason why companies actually issue stocks is because they use this as a way of raising money. When they raise money by selling shares of their company, this allows them to actually expand and grow their business. So any company that's growing and starting out, they're not gonna have shares available on any public stock exchange. What they're gonna do is take private funding from investors. And as they take this money and grow and grow, there might be a point where they think, hey, we can actually start selling our shares of our company on the public stock exchange instead of taking this private investing money. It's just different ways to raise money and expand your business. So when the company does go public, outside investors are able to come in and purchase individual shares of their company. And as a result, this company gets more funds coming in. They can use that money to make more money and hopefully reward their investors. To reward investors, companies can pay dividends based on the profits that they receive, as well as buying back shares of their own company. And when they do this, they're essentially going out there, buying their shares, and this reduces the available uh, inventory of stocks. So the supply goes down, and this normally will increase the price of the shares, which you know, rewards investors in another way. So yeah, that's a little overview of what stocks are. Next up, we're gonna talk about whether or not right now is a good time for you to actually invest in stocks. And a lot of this depends on assessing your current financial situation. More specifically, we're gonna be looking at how much debt you have and how much money you have in general. So for a lot of people that have a lot of debt, right now might not be the best time to start investing your money. Chances are that the debt you have comes with a pretty high interest rate. So you'll wanna see how much you're paying in interest on this debt that you have. Now, federal student loans will generally be pretty low, um, probably under 5%. For private student loans, those are generally a bit higher between five and 7% interest. And lastly, if you have credit card debt, then that's probably extremely high, at least 15 to 20%. My general rule is if you have a debt that's over 5%, Typically, and the safe way is to actually just pay that off right now. By doing that, you are guaranteeing a return of that percent just by paying off that debt, especially credit card debt, you guys. Like, if you have credit card debt, get that paid off as soon as you can. You don't wanna be paying 15 to 20% interest on that. And also carrying a balance on your credit card is not good for your credit score. Now, I'm not saying don't invest at all. I still think it's smart to invest and sort of get the ball rolling and learn as you do it. What I am saying is prioritize paying off those debts uh, invest a little bit into the stock market, but don't invest a significant amount of money that you have. Now, besides an emergency fund and besides a small amount of money that you should have in your checking and savings accounts just to pay your bills, a majority of your money otherwise should be in assets. And I'm talking real estate, investments, stocks, your business, anything that can generate money. Yeah, so for most people, take a look at your current financial situation and determine how much money you realistically have to invest in the stock market. This is the first step that a lot of people actually overlook look and it's extremely important to know your financial standing and therefore how much money you should be investing right now. Okay, next up is the fun part and this is actually opening up a brokerage account. I'm going to really prioritize the step because the fact is that a lot of people never get over this hump. They never open up a brokerage account and as a result, they never invest in stocks. The funny thing is it's actually a lot easier to open up a brokerage account than many people think. I'm all about taking action and if you want to become rich, if you want to invest your money, then you have to open up a brokerage account even if you don't think you are ready to do so yet. So the first step in opening up a brokerage is just choosing which brokerage you want to use. To be honest, it really does not matter what brokerage you use. They all do the same things and any brokerage that is widely used is going to be reliable and it's gonna be good enough for you. If you're just getting started in stock investing, what a lot of people like doing is opening up an account that has a good stock trading app. This way they can check their investments on their phone whenever they want and it's just a lot easier to keep up to date. Two of the most popular uh, stock 
stock trading apps are Robinhood and Webull. Both of these apps are fantastic, like you can't go wrong with either of them. But if you haven't heard, Webull is giving out two free stocks when you open up an account and deposit $100 into it. The cool thing is that these two stocks can be worth up to $1,650. So I just like to think of it as free cash. And if you're trying to open up an account, you might as well get some free money out of it. I'll include a link in the description below on how you can get those two free stocks through Webull. And yes, I use this app for my own trading. In fact, I actually use Webull, Robinhood, TD Ameritrade, Vanguard, as well as Coinbase for my cryptocurrencies. So yes, you all need to stick with one. You can open up multiple accounts. It really does not matter. The sign-up process for each brokerage is going to be very similar. They're going to ask you personal questions. They'll require that you're at least 18 years old and they'll ask things like your address, your name, your social security number, and a bunch of other personal questions. Then they will have you create an online account, which will let you log into this account and view all your investments and buy and sell and do whatever you want. Once you submit this application to open up your account, you know, this might take five to 10 minutes. They'll have to go through and approve it. This might take a day or two, but after that, you'll be ready to start buying and selling stocks. A lot of people ask me why I have so many different accounts open with different brokerages. And the reason is because I actually just separate out my investments. So for Vanguard, I like to use Vanguard for my retirement accounts. And I use Vanguard specifically to buy their long-term ETFs and index funds. Now I am a more risky person, so I do use Webull and I do use Robinhood for more of my short-term investing. This is where I actually choose individual companies, uh, buy them and sell them as I wish. My TD Ameritrade account has some other stocks that I don't touch too much. And yeah, I think it makes a lot of sense because with these apps, I can trade um, whenever I want. I can trade like right now just with my phone. But with Vanguard and with TD Ameritrade, it's just a little bit harder harder to uh, trade. I mean, it's still very easy. You just log on to your computer and trade, but that's just how I've structured my investments. All right, next up is we're gonna get into how you can actually analyze a stock. And what most people do, I would say about 70 to 80% of people do, is they do a fundamental analysis. I'll get more to this later, but this basically means that you care about what the company is doing. You care about their stats, their financials, and their revenues. So the whole goal of investing in stocks is that you want to buy companies that are undervalued. That means you're much more likely to be able to make money when that stock does go up. Now, conversely, that's why buying stocks that are overvalued can sometimes be very dangerous. You wouldn't buy a $20 bill for $25. So why would you buy a stock that's heavily overvalued? It's a lot more complicated than that. And we really don't have any like specific and direct ways of determining whether or not a stock is overvalued. But the general rule is you want to buy assets that are undervalued rather than overvalued. Let's get into some key terms that you guys should know that will help you really um, analyze stocks and better understand my other stock videos. So first up is your PE ratio, your price to earnings ratio. Now, the way you calculate this is you take the current share price and you divide that by the earnings per share. There's different types of PE ratios. For example, there's the TTM PE ratio, which is the trailing 12 months PE ratio. What they use for this formula is they take the current share price and they divide it by the earnings per share for the last 12 months. There's also the forward PE ratio. And this is when you take the current share price, so the same thing as the other one, and you divide it by the earnings per share that is projected for the future. You do this quick math and it gives you a number. So let's take a look at Apple stock, for example. Right now they have a PE ratio of 27.11. So what we do is we take the current share price, which is $322.32, and we divide that by the earnings per share, which in this case is $11.89. This is how we reach the 27.11 PE ratio. Some companies will actually not have a PE ratio if they are losing money or if they have no earnings. A low PE ratio means that the stock could be undervalued and a high PE ratio means that the stock could be overvalued. A high PE ratio also means that this could be because investors think that this company will grow a lot. So that's why, yes, we see PE ratios in the hundreds for a lot of these momentum stocks that are growing very fast. And it's really an art. There's no cutoff number that says whether or not a stock is a buy or a sell or if it's overvalued or undervalued. It's just one of the many things you have to look at when you're doing a fundamental analysis. So yes, for Apple, 27.11, that is a little bit high. I think generally, anything above 20 is considered sort of high, but you also need to take into account the industry as well as the potential growth for this company in the future. Another number that is important is the peg ratio, and this is the price to earnings to growth ratio. To calculate the peg ratio, you take the PE ratio from what we got before and you divide it by the earnings per share growth over X years. I know this is a little bit complicated, so let's go through an example. Let's say that a company has a share price of $50 and 
and their earnings per share is $1. This leaves them with a PE ratio of 50. So like I said, the earnings per share for this year is $1. And let's say that we project the earnings per share in five years to be $1.25. This would equate to a 25% growth rate. Therefore, to calculate the peg ratio for this company, we are taking that 50 PE ratio and dividing it by 25. And this leaves us with a peg ratio of just two. So you can really see how this kind of tones down the PE ratio for these high growth companies that are expected to have their earnings per share grow a lot in the next few years. Okay, next up is your ROE. And this is your return on equity. This is a measure of the financial performance of a company and the higher it is, the better it is. To calculate your return on equity, you take your net income and you divide it by the shareholders equity. It basically tells you how a effectively management is using their assets to create profits. Now for the S&P 500, the average ROE is about 14%. So anything above that is going to be pretty good. And anything I'd say uh, under 10% is going to be on the low side. Another number I really like to look at is the current ratio. And this is basically calculated by dividing the current assets by the current liabilities. It's a number that tells you a company's financial strength in the short term. So let's say a company has current assets of $2 billion and current liabilities of $1 billion. This would leave you with a current ratio of two. Anything above one is preferred as that means that they have more assets than liabilities, at least in the short term. It also depends on the industry. Some industries, it's normal to have a very high current ratio and some industries, it's very normal to have a low current ratio. So guys, I've gone over four values that you should know when analyzing a stock but there are so many other different keywords and terms that you should know. I definitely can't go into all these, but I just recommend going on Investopedia and looking up all these terms and memorizing the definition. It's going to give you a lot of insight as to what they mean, as well as how you can use them to analyze your own stocks. Another thing I like to look at are analyst ratings. And this tells you whether or not a bunch of analysts are saying if you should buy or sell a stock. They'll generally rate it on a scale from one to five. It just gives you another viewpoint, which I do think is extremely helpful when analyzing a stock. Another thing you can look at is the analyst's average price target. So that's what the average analyst thinks the price of the stock should be at. And what you do is you compare that to the current price and that sort of tells you whether or not this stock could be overvalued. So guys, in short, with a fundamental analysis, we care about how the company is doing and how it's performing. We've only dived into a few key numbers, so make sure to look up more information by yourself. You can check out The Intelligent Investor. It's a very good book about fundamental analysis, and you can also do a ton of research online, look at these terms, memorize them, and you'll have a much better understanding of how to analyze a company. So the next method of investing that we're gonna talk about is technical analysis. And this is something that I actually don't have a lot of experience in. Technical analysis on a whole does not really care about the company itself. They don't care about the revenues, they don't care about the financials, the earnings, all that stuff. What they prioritize more is the graph. And pretty much what it is, is you're studying the price graph and you're using that to predict the future price gains or losses. So to predict these future price movements, people like to identify entry and exit points for stocks. They use trend lines, candlestick formations, moving averages, and a lot more. Basically, they're studying the market and behavior psychology and using that to their advantage. This is definitely a riskier way of investing because you can either lose a lot of money or you can make a lot of money. The one thing that you don't have on your side though is the general trend of the market going up. Now, I really encourage you, if you want to trade using technical analysis, you have to really know what you're doing. Learn all the tips and tricks, practice on a simulation account, just be a lot more careful because I think with technical analysis, a lot of things are out of your control. And if you don't know what you're doing, you won't know when to cut your losses if you're losing money. And you might let a lot of emotions get into your head when you're trying to trade. And the last thing you want when you're trading stocks, either using fundamental analysis or technical analysis is having your emotions involved. So yeah, there are pros and cons to both of these methods, but I think the important thing is to get good at one of them, whichever one you want to focus on, whichever one suits your investment style, and just learn as much as you can. Do a lot of practice, and in the future, you're going to get very good at it. Okay, now let's get into how you can find stocks to buy. I personally always say that you should have more money invested in index funds than individual companies. So what I'm going to do in this video is just focus for maybe like 30 seconds on index funds and then I'll go into actually 
picking out individual companies. So with index funds, pretty much what you're doing is you're buying one share of this index fund and it's like investing in hundreds of companies at one time. So yes, this is a safer and more diversified way of investing. The good thing is that you don't need to think too much about it. You just choose what type of fund you want and which index you want to track. And after you buy it, you pretty much just hold it and don't really think about it. This gives you long-term reliable gains. So it's very good for retirement accounts. And Warren Buffett always thinks that this is the smartest way to invest for 99% of people. You guys can check out this video I made for some of the most popular ETFs that you can invest in. All right, now let's talk about how you can actually pick individual companies to invest in. And I think one of the best things about actually having to choose companies is that it forces you to learn about what you're investing in and how you can actually analyze a specific company. So for most beginners, I like to recommend just choosing a company that you know, that you're familiar with. If there's a company that you particularly love, look at the reasons why you like it, put it on your short list of stocks that you're considering, and then do an analysis of each of these companies that you're familiar with. A key thing when investing in a company is that you should know what the company is what they do and their whole financials and earnings and all that stuff. This is the safest way to actually get started in investing. Chances are for these companies that you are familiar with, they're probably strong, they're probably a blue chip company, and they'll probably see good long-term growth. Now, if you wanna focus more on technical analysis instead of fundamental analysis, you'll have to do a lot of research and a lot of practice in order to identify companies that will do well. What I recommend doing is testing out your skills with the paper money market simulator that can be found in Thinkorswim. This allows you to do fake trades with these real companies and give you an opportunity to actually practice on the real stock market. There are also a lot of these Facebook and Discord groups where people talk about these trending stocks and that can give you a good idea of a short list of stocks that you want to focus on. Guys, I really have to reiterate that there's not one correct way of trading. Find what works for you and stick with that. For most beginners, I think it's at least extremely important to learn the fundamentals, learn how to analyze stocks, and then after that, maybe you can start learning the technical analysis side. Woo, so that was a lot of information. Right now, I'm going to give you guys some key takeaways that I think will help you a lot. So first up is start young. The earlier you start investing, the more potential you have in making money. Everything in life follows the compound effect. So the more years you have in this investment, the better. If you don't have a lot to invest, prioritize investing in yourself first. When you're investing not too much money, the potential for gains is a lot less. And I just think that your money could be better spent on improving yourself and building your own businesses. Right now is a very volatile time, so be extremely careful when you're investing. This is why I also practice something called dollar cost averaging. And this is just buying stocks in increments. It's not taking all your money and buying stocks at one time. It's just buying stocks gradually. And therefore, if the prices change a lot, then it sort of just averages out and is a little bit more safe. Right now, the stock market is very high and I'll just caution with investing a lot of your money right now because we could definitely see more drops. I mean, I don't know. I can't predict the future, but I just want to say that it is sort of a dangerous time. After you watch this video, find more books that can help you. Look online, soak in a lot of knowledge before you start investing. And when you do actually buy your first stocks, Make sure to do your own due diligence and do your own research about that company. It's important that you understand your own analysis and why you're actually investing in this company. So with that, I hope you guys found this video useful. And if you haven't started investing yet, you know, I hope this guide can start to kickstart your whole investing career. Like I mentioned before, if you have not signed up for a brokerage yet, you might as well sign up for Webull using the link in the description below. And that's gonna give you two free stocks worth up to $1,650 when you deposit $100 into your account. Happy trading, stay safe, and if you guys like this video, make sure to hit that like button and also subscribe to my channel if you wanna see more videos just like this. I make a ton of videos about investing, personal finance, and entrepreneurship. So yeah, I'd love for you guys to join. Anyways, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.